Welcome to Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher. I am so honored and excited to have you join me on today. Listen, if you haven't done so already, I invite you to come on in the room. Join our Facebook group where you will receive real talk, real truth, real love, real wisdom, real help, and real transformation. I also invite you to join us on YouTube. Go ahead and like and subscribe, like and subscribe so you can stay connected to all God is doing through woman to woman to help you with your holistic self care. Amen. Now let's dive on into what you came for today. Sister Sierra Howard encouraged us um, by pointing out that though we may not think we possess qualities of the Proverbs 31 woman, if we really put some thought into, you know, who we are and what we do, we will see that we most likely possess at least one of those characteristics, right? We got to give ourselves more credit, at least one of those characteristics. And then if we're striving towards achieving more of them, God is pleased with that. And so she's, you know, she just wanted to encourage us. Don't be discouraged, you know, be encouraged by our efforts and don't be overwhelmed by the example, but just strive towards it. It's a, it's a standard. It's, it's something that you're striving toward. And as long as you're striving toward, toward it, God is pleased with that. And then last Wednesday, we had a woman to woman here about what if your husband is not a man of valor. And so we had um, a good time for that. We had some, some, some wives who were blessed by that. We have had a lot of information poured into us. And, and I encourage you that you um, use all of that information to help you to draw closer to God and to be virtuous and to be who God created you to be and to and to strive towards spiritual maturity because you were definitely given the the tools that you need to do that. Um, ladies, it is vital to be holistically healthy and and whole. Physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual health are vital to maturity and the ability to function the way that God created you to function. And so I encourage you to read the books. We've covered both of them already, I think February and March. Um, the Emotionally Healthy Women. I know I keep bringing it, bringing it up, but it's, I'm telling you it'll change your life. And then um, The Power of a Praying Woman. That's vi It's vitally important to get those areas under control so that you can be all God has um, created you to be. So to position yourself to be virtuous, you must first be full and complete, holistically healthy and whole. Up until this point, everything has been about us and what we have to do. But he has some responsibilities too, ladies. It just happened to be our month that focus on us and improving ourselves. But he does have some responsibilities, right? And he, he becomes responsible for your um, physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, meaning that he has to give an account to God for how he stewards you as his wife, right? It's not, it's not by any means putting responsibilities on him that, that he should not be responsible for, but he does have to um, answer to God for, for the stewardship of his wife. And so in Ephesians 5 and 25, it tells us husbands that they are to love their wives so much that they are willing to die for her right? Wow, that's major. Just as Christ died for his bride, the church. In First Peter 3 and 7, it tells husbands to honor their wives so that their prayers will not be hindered. And a husband's love and responsibility to his wife is so serious that God will not even acknowledge his prayers until he is in right relationship with his wife. So this is the kind of man that you want to be found by, ladies. This is the kind of man that you want to be found by, that has a heart of God and that is willing to obey God and his standards for marriage. And so this is the type of man that God wants for you. And, and you're not going to find him in the bar. You're not going to find him in the club. You're not going to find him in a church that acts like the bar or the club, right? And so um, too many marriages fail because they did not seek marriage counseling that properly prepares them for it. They, they were not taught about God's design for marriage. Um, they entered into a holy union 
in their flesh and then and then are surprised about why it fails, right? And so to position yourself to be a virtuous woman, you must understand God's design for the husband, um, for the husband that he wants you wants you to have and for the marriage that he wants you to have. And so um understanding that is important. Verse 11 says her husband has entrusted his heart to her for she brings him the rich spoils of victory and her husband trusts her with her heart for she reminds him that he's a winner, right? For choosing her and with, um, with her comes rewards, tangible, um, rewards, um, to remind him of that. And again, we already learned that she was made from his bones, which protect his heart. And she is to be his crown and not rottenness to his bones. Verse 12, all throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. She it has um, his best interest at heart at all times in all things. Her life nurtures he is and doesn't destroy it. Verse 13, she searches out continually to possess that which is pure and righteous. She delights in the work of her hands. She seeks after purity and righteousness. Um, she has a personal relationship with God. She enjoys being productive, right? And she is not lazy. Verse 14, she gives out revelation truth to feed others. She is like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. So she receives divine revelation from God and speaks that truth in love to others, providing the nourishment needed for their spiritual growth. Verse, verse 15, even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for hungry ones in her house and for others. So she awakes out of her sleep to feed people in her home and anyone else who is hungry. Verse 16, she sets her heart upon a nation. She takes it as her own, carrying it with her. She labors there to plant the living vines. So she has a heart for others, her city, her county, her state, and loves them as her own, taking on the responsibility of planting Jesus in the li um, Jesus, who is the living vine into their lives. Verse 17, she wraps herself in strength and power in all her works. So she wraps herself in the strength, the might and the power of God who enables her to do everything that he has created her to do. Verse 18, she tastes and experiences a better substance and her shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night she has tasted for herself and experienced for herself the best that God offers and society's darkness will not cause her light to dim in effort to share it with others. Verse 19, she, stre she stretches out her hands to help the needy and she lays hold on the wheels of government. She helps those in need. She understands how the government works and she maximizes what they have to offer to help her meet those needs. Verse two, so basically she's a social worker, right? Verse 20, she is known by her extravagant generosity to the poor, for she always reaches out her hands to those in needs. Uh, she is known for serving the poor from her heart with the spirit of excellence. She does not treat them as less than worthy of the same quality of excellence that she desires for her worth, for herself. And that's big, right? You know, just because somebody doesn't have um, something that you have, or they, 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 they look different than you, or you can see that they are, you know, living in poverty, they, they still deserve excellence, right? And so we should minister, minister to them in excellence. We should serve them in excellence. Um, verse 21, she is not afraid of tribulation for all her household is covered in the dual garments of righteousness and grace. She is not afraid of the enemy's tactics because she has taken intentional steps to make sure that her household is covered in righteousness and that they understand grace. Verse 22, her clothing is beautifully knit together, a purple gown of exquisite linen. So she dresses herself like royalty. That, that purple is a, is, a, is a color of royalty. She, she dresses herself like royalty and carries herself as such. I posted a picture in the group earlier this week that gives a visual of how the way you dress can be positive 
or how it can be negative. On one side, there was a, a woman dressed in as royalty. She, and, and, and she was holding the hand of her, of her little daughter who was dressed as royalty as well. And then on the other hand was a woman who was pretty much dressed like a stripper. And she was holding sadly, holding the hand of a little girl who was dressed the same. That, 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 that image it was powerful, right? And so ladies, how you dress speaks volumes about how you view yourself, whether you agree with it or not. More importantly, the people in your realm of influence, especially your children, are watching you and I and and are either positively or negatively affected by it as well. And so just like that image, you teach your daughters how to carry themselves as royalty or less than royalty. We'll just say that, right? Less than royalty. And so if you dress as royalty and allow your daughters to dress as less than royalty, you're still teaching them the same negative lesson, right? So not only you have to dress as royalty, but that has to be a requirement for your children, your daughters as well. And so the way you dress also teaches your sons what is acceptable for females to wear, right? And a lot of times we don't we don't understand the impact of what we do as women, as mothers, has an effect on the lives of our sons and males and how they view women, but it, but it's serious, right? And so if you dress and carry yourself as royalty, that is what they will find attractive. And if you dress less than royalty and carry yourself as less than royalty, that is what they will either list. They will either find that attractive or they will be disgusted by it, right? And so if your son views you as royalty and you don't view yourself that way, it can leave a bitter taste in his in his mouth about women and it can destroy his view of them. And he can become so disgusted and so ashamed that of the way that you carry yourself that they begin to objectify women and treat women poorly because they're just they're a little, their little hearts are torn. They don't know how to process all of that. You know, I, 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 I think mom, I think I, I view mommy as this, but mommy presents herself as, as that. And it's. It's it's struggle. It's a struggle right on there. They, them trying to process that. And so, you know, I say this every year. Summer is here and it's the devil's favorite time of year. I say this every year. He, he likes the heat, right? He turns he turns up his heat as he pursues seeking who he can devour because he likes the heat. Right. Children are out of out of school and unsupervised, making them more susceptible to get into sinful things. Right. Girls begin wearing less clothes that sexualize them. These sexualized girls then flaunt themselves before boys who are visual and hormonal and, and don't know how to handle all of them. Both of them, neither the boy or the girl don't know how to handle all of them, all of them hormones going on. Right. And so these little children end up having sex, getting STDs, getting pregnant. Right. That's the reality of what happens. And then on top of that, their moms are thirsty for attention, right? Because they don't know their worth or their value. And so they dress in, in less in less clothing and, and sexualize themselves as well. And then their sons and their daughters see them chasing after men um, who only want to have sex with their mom, right? With with not only sex with their mom, sex with sex with their daughters, sex with their sons. It's, it's perverts out there now, right? And so it's a vicious cycle. The whole family unit and the whole community is under attack. And this all happens. A se summer is the season, right? That's the devil's season to just roam and devour and devour. And so um, it's important that we understand that as we move forward it, because it's right here. Like it's right here next week is June, right? And so to be to, to position yourself to be virtuous, you must know your worth and carry yourself as royalty. Verse 23, her husband is famous and admired by all sitting as the, um, as a judge of his people. Her husband is well known and respected in the community. She, she contributes to, um, people's positive view of him by the way that she carries herself and her devotion to pray for him and his reputation. Um, the power of a praying wife is, is, is a good one. Um, I think I mentioned, yeah, I, I know I did about praying for your husband, right? And, 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 
behind the scenes prayer. He don't even got to know about all the prayers that are going on, right? Because it's not about being getting acknowledged for it, right? But it's about wanting what's best for him at all times and just pray over all of that stuff. And sometimes as women, as wives, God reveals things to us, not so that we can always run and tell him because he may not be ready to receive it, but so that we can pray. That's our job is to pray for whatever it is that God laid on our hearts about ourselves, about our husband, about our children, about our home, about our community, about our church, whatever it is. We are to be prayer warriors. That's how we fight our battles on our knees in prayer. Amen. Um, verse 24 even her works of righteousness, she does for the benefit of her enemies. Um, she is mature enough to not exclude her enemies as beneficiaries of her righteousness as it is distributed. So she is mature enough to treat them, her enemies, the way she wants to be treated, not the way that they treat her. And that takes maturity to be able to do that. Spiritual maturity to be able to do that. Right. And because it's talking about righteousness there. And so verse 25 Bold power and glorious majesty are wrapped around her as she laughs with joy over the latter days. So she is wrapped in boldness, power, and glory um, as she embraces her future with joy, excitement, because she has positioned herself for greatness and blessings. She has positioned herself for blessings, right? So she, she should be excited about anticipating the blessings that are going to come. Verse 26. Her teachings are filled with wisdom and kindness as loving instructions pour from her lips. Um, she, so she teaches and instructs with wisdom, kindness, and love to those who have an ear to hear what God gives her to speak. And that's important to understand. You know, um, people are, everybody is not going to receive what you have to say, right? But for the ones that are, you know, that's who God has. That's who that's who your realm of influence is. Your realm of influence are the people who have an ear to hear what God has to say to and through you. The words of wisdom, the words of instruction, the words of in, in, encouragement, the words of all of all of that. Right. And so just be mindful of that. Don't get discouraged if somebody um, is not open to receive from you. That just means that they're not they're not who you're assignment is, right? Because the people that God has assigned to you, they will be open to receive from you. Um, verse 27, she watches over the ways of her household and meets every need they have. She meets every need of her husband, her children, her home. They, they are not neglected. They are her priority. She makes sure that their physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual needs are met. Verse 28, her sons and daughters arise in one accord to extol her virtues and her husband arises to speak of her in glowing terms. And so her children are united in their positive thoughts toward the character and virtues that she has modeled for them. Um, we already learned that it's important to know what a proverb is and what a proverb is not. It's, it is wisdom that is followed that, um, that if followed positions you for the things discussed in the book of wisdom. And so if you have trained your children in the things of God so that when they are older, they will, they will be less likely to depart from him. Um, but they are choosing to be disobedient, to be disobedient to God's will. Um, they're, they're not honoring God. So they're not going to honor you. So don't get yourself all worked up. If they're not honoring God, they're not going to honor you. It's unrealistic for you to believe that. So don't frustrate yourself about that. Pray for them, right? And so um, her husband appreciates all she does for her and their children and gives her verbal praise for it. We talked about this last week, right? We learned that we cannot control what other people do and what they do not do. And so if you're being obedient to God and, and you're worthy of the praise that your husband is not giving you, continue to model Christ-like behavior before him and pray for him. And as you woo God's heart, slowly but surely, your husband's heart will eventually be wooed as well. And so understand that it is a process and trust the process. Um, verse 29, there are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended above them all. Um, she, so she is an example of virtue and nobility for other women. Um, T 
TV, music, media are all saturated with ungodly examples of what a woman should be, should not be, should wear, should not wear, should do, should not do, should say, should not say, where she should go, where she should not go, right? And so godly examples of a woman um, that is pursuing spiritual maturity and that is pursuing being virtuous are needed in today's society and in your realm of influence and in your community and on your job and on your street, right? And so if that's that's you, start there, start in your home, start on your street, start on your job, start in your city, start in your church, start on Facebook, right? On your Facebook page and start in your realm of influence and pray that others will take that responsibility um, more seriously as well. Verse 30, um, charm can be misleading and beauty is vain and so quickly fades. But this virtuous woman lives in the wonder, the awe and the fear of the Lord. And so she, she reverences the Lord and her glory, her godly character will cause her to be reminded in a, be remembered in a positive light as her example is modeled and talked about for all her generations to come. And so you have the ladies, you have the ability to have a lasting positive effect on your children, your children's children, their children's children, right? The, you have the ability to break family strongholds. You have the ability to alter your family's destiny by leading them towards Christ, towards righteousness, towards holiness, um, towards spiritual maturity. And so the question is, are you willing to make the sacrifices needed to do that, right? Because if you are, your reward will be so worth it. Amen. And then lastly, verse 31, it says, so go ahead and give her the credit that is due for she has become a radiant woman and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the gateway of every city. And so, so give her the honor that she deserves for she has put in the work to deserve it. Right. We talked about on Saturday at the at the banquet about it, putting in the work. Right. You got to do something. You know, too many women, they just expect to receive honor, but they didn't do anything um, that was worthy of of that honor. Right. And so it would be nice to to reap your rewards on Earth. But if you don't, don't be discouraged or our, our ultimate goal should be to look our heavenly father in the face and hear him say, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so let everything you do be as unto the Lord, not unto men. And then if they don't appreciate you, you can't be disappointed, right? If you don't, if it's, if your work is unto God and not unto men, if man doesn't appreciate you, you can't be disappointed because who you were trying to please was never man. It was God. Amen. And so let's, um, that's it. That's it. We covered, we covered verses. We covered everything this month. We, we, we unpacked a lot of stuff this month. Um, I am full. I hope that you are full. Um, and I hope that everything that was, um, relayed to you that you will use in your life to go forth, to give birth, to give life, to be virtuous, right? Um, and to be all who God created you to be. We thank so much all of our guest speakers. We thank um, Sister Sierra Howard, uh, Minister Tony Young, uh, Prophetess um, Janelle LaRue, we are so thankful for every for every woman of abundant life ministries um who was there every sunday we had a our, our winner for the uh sister olivia won her her pedicure um out of the women who uh, were there every sunday our our abundant life ministries ladies are always so faithful they're there every sunday they're here every wednesday so we definitely honor you and appreciate you um we appreciate all of the guests that came we we appreciate Every person who invited someone, I think Sister Teresa had um, the most guests to come. I should have got an award for that, huh? Um, but but we are thankful for every person that you invited, whether they came or not. We are thankful for every word that went forth over the last over this last month, and and I'm excited to see the fruit of that. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited to see the fruit of that. Seeds have been planted. Words of wisdom have been planted. Um, lessons 
Um, the word of God has been planted into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, into our spirits. And I'm excited about seeing the harvest, um, seeing the seeing the fruit of that. And so if you are in the Aliquippa area, the Beaver County area, I invite you to come uh, to join us at Abundant Life Ministries 2370 Hospital Drive, where Elder Elliot Fisher Jr. is the pastor. Um, and hey, we're excited about this this next. We in, we're going into a new month, right, with new expectations, a new season. Also, summer is coming up with new expectations, just newness all around. Amen. The our 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 um, seventh year, just just newness just newness all around. And so God is good. He's worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. And we definitely give it to him. And um, that's it for tonight. We're going to pray out. Um, I hope that your week is, uh, you enjoy this beautiful weather. I hope to see you on Sunday. And in the, I guess you won't see me on Wednesday, but I'll still be making posts. So engage, right? Engage in the different posts that go forth so that we can stay connected since we're not going to be, I don't plan on anyway, on on, on on doing lives during this month, but I'm still going to make posts and, and, and stay connected. And so um, this will be an important time to stay engaged so I can see you um, putting your hand in, in our woman to woman group. Amen. All right. Lord God, we thank you for you are so worthy of all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your loving kindness, your grace, and your mercy for loving us in spite of us, for fearfully and wonderfully creating us to do great things for your kingdom. We thank you, God, for this month of appreciating women, a woman of powerful influence, a virtuous woman. God, we thank you for who you created us to be. You 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 created us, God. You equipped us to do great things. We are we are we are made of substance and we are to operate in wisdom and we are um, you chose us to take care of our husbands and our families and our children and our home and even the community um, of, of people that did not come from our womb. But just because our heart is so be it, God. So I ask that you would just increase our wisdom, increase our humility, increase our spiritual maturity so that we can we can minister to the lives of of the people that you have placed into our realm of influence, God. Build us up where we need built up. Strengthen us where we need strengthened. Encourage us where we need encouragement, that we can be all that you have called us to be. And help us to know our worth, God. Help us to see ourselves the way that you see us. Help us to value ourselves the way that you value us. Help us to see the worth in us that you see, God. Help us to know that that, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in your image, images of you, the almighty, the all-powerful God, who is definitely worthy of our praise, adoration, glory, obedience, everything. We owe everything to you, God, and we just thank you for who you are. So we say, be with us as we go. In the remainder of our week, keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Bring us back at the appointed hour to continue to lift up your name and to bring glory to you in every area of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Go forth, give life, give birth, do it all, do it all. Everything God called you to do, go do it. In Jesus' name, amen. My heart's desire is that this content was a blessing to you. If it was, please be a blessing to me by subscribing to this channel hitting the like button if you're already subscribed and sharing this video into your realm of influence either way. I also invite you to join our Facebook group, Woman to Woman with Lady Aisha Fisher. May you continue to be blessed to be a blessing. Love you.